So it really is my pleasure to introduce Felix Oberhoser G., the Andreas Anderson Professor of Business Administration at Harvard Business School. Felix, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here uh, to kick off this conference with, uh, uh, I think, what you will come to see as sort of an, an opener in, in a broad conversation. Uh, as John has just reminded us, we're on the verge of figuring out what this thing is and how it's going to work, and in particular, how it's going to make us uh, hopefully a lot of money and uh, give us abilities to, to reach consumers in new and productive ways. Uh, my role, uh, I think, uh, is to keep you a little bit from diving in at least for the next 45 minutes or so. Uh, so instead of asking, oh, how do we measure and how do we figure out what works, what doesn't work, uh, I, will, I will keep us uh, a little bit at a, more, at a more general level thinking about the strategic landscape. Uh, if you had to choose between two common tags, which one would you pick? So uh, obviously lots of, lots of considerations here. Uh, you probably want to think about the resolution model. You want to think about the requirements to activate the code. You want to think about opportunities to customize. Can I embed this in, say, my company's logo? Can we actually teach consumers that every time when they see a company's logo, or oh, in all likelihood there's going to be a barcode that's going to take me somewhere interesting, uh, is there a connection to a marketing pl platform? What are the analytics like that I can get from the different codes? And are they free? Do they cost? And so on and so on. When you make these decisions, many of them super mundane, what you want to think about is the broad strategic landscape. Uh, much of the conference will be devoted to questions of value creation. How do we create greater user engagement, consumer engagement? How do we create additional value for consumers? And in particular, what are the complements that are needed to build an ecosystem in which mobile marketing can thrive? Complements, as you might remember uh, from your business school days, are these things that increase the demand for other products or services. So razor, razor blade is the canonical example. Uh, mustard and hot dog is one that is closer uh, to my heart. Uh, Complements are absolutely critical for the adoption of technology. iTunes and the suite of electronic products produced by Apple are complements. Uh, the moment iTunes becomes available to many consumers, that number jumps to 770,000 iPods sold per quarter. Sony and Amazon e-readers. What's the difference? Wireless. If I see something I like, I don't even have to get up to buy it. Okay? Compliments make all the difference. Compliments are going to be crucial for mobile marketing to be successful. So in everything that we will do and we'll talk about measuring the deep impact of mobile marketing, fantastic. But that impact is going to depend on the availability of high quality compliments. Only if they're available can mobile marketing be effective. Uh, so much for value creation. So that's, that's much of the program. And I'm really looking forward to uh, learning more from the various speakers where we are in figuring out how to create value. Uh, the, the strategist's job is to think mostly about value capture. What was the distribution of profitability from personal computing? Well, turns out only a few players benefited. Uh, the length of the bar is revenue attributed to the various companies. So yes, lots of value was created, and it was sucked up by just two companies, in essence. That, I think, is the big strategic question that we're facing now that mobile marketing is in its infancy. Can we make this work? Probably. Next big question, how will the value be distributed? With every decision that you make, even decisions as mundane as which of several barcodes will I use, to think through what are the consequences when it comes to these companies' ability to capture value. Let me uh, walk you through a few considerations that often speak to the ability to capture value in a particular industry. 
Uh, I just pointed out that compliments in general are your friend. Uh, complimenters, the companies that provide compliments, are often not. Uh, famous example, the relationship between Apple and the music companies. Uh, Apple makes almost no money off of its iTunes store. And Apple is perfectly happy with that. Because iTunes is an important complement to the iPhone or to any device that you have. And compliments are better if they're cheap. One of the dangers is that the complementer will shift the profit pool so that you cannot reach it, so that you cannot participate. Okay? This is, of course, exactly what happened uh, to the music companies. But even better. Apple was even better uh, positioned than just having a powerful compliment. Remember compliments? You want them to be cheap if someone else produces them. Oh, what's the best price for a compliment? The best price for a compliment is zero. And zero, they exactly got. In a world where content is free, the demand for electronics shoots up. And Apple makes all the money while the content producers find it difficult to tap into the shifting profit pool? That, I think, is the key question, strategically speaking, to ask in mobile marketing. Mobile marketing, if it works, if it does all the wonderful things which we'll hear about for the rest of the conference, what shifts in profit pool, what shifts in profit pools will it uh, precipitate? The elements to watch out for are these fours. How prevalent are compliments? Uh, are they produced competitively? Are they produced by companies with strong market power? Uh, where do we have proprietary standards? Uh, this should always be a consideration even when you make tactical decisions, even down to choosing things like barcodes. Uh, do we have important network effects? And if so, do they sit at the level of the industry or do they sit at at uh, the level of an individual company? And then finally, what role do differences in price elasticity across the value chain play? Proprietary standards. Uh, so this is the comment that we heard right from the beginning. Uh, QR codes, patented, but at least for the time being, freely available. Uh, Microsoft tags, easy code tags, proprietary standards. So as you make these mundane choices, they just seem to have to do with, oh, how easy is it to print and is it colorful? What does it look like? Each of these choices will have an impact on how profit pools shift in the industry. Uh, if we shift towards uh, a world in which the standards compete, the benefit is that there's no one single company that can capture most of the value. The downside is that we will have lots and lots of incompatibilities that make it more difficult for consumers to enjoy the benefits that mobile marketing can bring. Network effects. Uh, network effects uh, play in the new world in two ways, both indirect and direct. Uh, direct network effects just enhance user value as more people adopt a particular product or a particular practice. Uh, the key distinction here is Network effects that sit at the level of the industry and network effects that sit at the level of a specific company. So uh, take mobile to mobile. Obviously, as more people adopt mobile phones, having a mobile phone becomes more valuable. That is just a direct network effect. Is that a competitive threat? Does it lead to one company locking up or getting exclusive access to profit pools? No. Why? Because the network effect sits at the level of the industry. All right, let me talk about uh, a last, a last dynamic here having to do with the installation of monopolists in the value chain as a result of differences in price elasticity. The story obviously is this hookup of uh, Apple and AT&T as the monopoly provider of mobile services uh, for the early versions of the iPhone. And you would think this seems very strange. If this is, in fact, a world in which network effects are important, what we learn in business school is, oh, mass adoption really matters. Why would you want to hook up with someone who has market power, who's a monopolist on the other side, in the complement uh, that provides uh, wireless, wireless services?
And AT&T says, well, it sort of depends, is Verizon going to have it? Is Sprint going to have it? And if the answer is no, you're going to be the only one. That is much more valuable. Uh, the model essentially maps out what's the value of being the only one with the iPhone to AT&T compared to a competitor gets the iPhone. So this is a last factor to really pay attention to. As mobile marketing takes off and as the industry develops, you will often see that some solutions just seem far superior. Why does it matter? Well, it matters for the reasons that you saw on the graph in the PC industry, and it matters in particular for marketing efforts because, uh, as this person here in 1998 pointed out, there was uh, one type of business that just no matter what the business cycle, they would always do remarkably well. In fact, the collection of these businesses for sure would always be all the way in the right hand in the distribution of margins among the Fortune 500 companies. And often, as the, point, as the person here points out, uh, beating the, profit, the profitability of Fortune 500 companies. What's the industry? Just insane margins. You look at it and go, oh my god, how did they do this? And not, not like a fluke, you know, not like, oh, I got lucky, I have a great product this quarter. Year after year, just inexplicably profitable. I know it's hard to remember now. Newspapers. Okay. A newspaper company that wouldn't show double-digit returns, just completely appalling. What's wrong with management? And of course, this was not because news was ever profitable. News was never profitable. But what was profitable was giving companies access to consumers. And we overpaid year after year after year after year, making newspapers this enormously profitable business. Much of the benefit of connecting consumers and companies in interesting, promising ways accrued to the, owner of, to the owners of paper. As we're building the mobile marketing industry, uh, let's not make that mistake again. Let's make sure the mobile marketers and the brands get a good portion of the value that's being created here. Thank you very much.